What's going on guys? My name is Kerry. Last week we delivered a new home over to our lot in Vernon, BC at Sandy Beach Mobile Home Park. If you missed that video, you can check it out right up here somewhere. Now what we're going to do is take you through the process of what happens between the time the home is delivered to the time it's ready for someone to move in. If you're buying a new manufactured home, you can't just show up the day it's delivered with your suitcase. Yes, I have had someone do that. You need to give the setup crew a little bit of time to do their thing. Realistically, you want to give the setup guys at least a week from the day it's delivered to the time you're moving in. That doesn't mean it can't be done faster, but do you really want someone rushing to set up your house? No, you don't. You want them taking their time and doing it right. So let's go through the steps of what's involved in setting up a manufactured home. The first step after delivery is to block and level the home. In my area, we use concrete blocks to do that, but depending on the trucker's schedule, sometimes they'll unload the house onto temporary wood blocks, and then the setup crew will lower it off of the wood blocks onto the concrete blocks with jacks, or sometimes they'll do what's called hanging the house while the setup crew goes underneath, sets the concrete blocks to the height with the laser, and then it just comes right off the truck onto the permanent block. So it just depends on how much time the trucking company has or whether they have to hit the road. If they can stick around and hang the house, it does cut out a step, so that's always a bonus. After the home has been set on its permanent blocks, the setup crew can start with the skirting. The skirting usually takes half a day to a day, depending on the size of the crew. So between unloading the home, blocking and leveling, and skirting, you're looking at one to two days. Now, landscaping can also be started once the home is in its permanent location, but that's not really as time sensitive to moving into the home. So you can start it after the home's been set, but sometimes people like to wait till after so you don't have a bunch of people bumping into each other trying to get things done. Saying that, it is nice to get the landscaping done before the homeowners arrive because then it's just a cleaner look. They don't have to think about anything. They just move into a final product and away they go on with their life. Most people, all people, want power in their new home, so one of the steps that has to be done is bring an electrician to run the tech cable from the home site up into the house. Now, if it's going into a manufactured home park, usually what it'll be is the tech cable runs from the home site underground to a little kiosk where all the hydrometers are located. That's nice because once the home is, uh, has the tech cable run up inside from the electrician, then it's just a matter of calling the hydro company and saying, yeah, hello, we've got site 56 in Sandy Beach Mobile Home Park. Can you flip it on from your end? And they do that. If it's going on a private property, it does add a step because first the electrician will run the cable into the house and then you call the hydro company and they bring a meter out to the site. So it does add a step and it can delay things because they've got a different schedule than us and sometimes they aren't in the same rush we are to get someone into their new home. Another thing that can be done as soon as the house is blocked and leveled is the sewer and water hookup. So you want to have your water line coming out of the ground as close to where it goes into the house as possible. Usually that happens right under the hot water tank. Some manufacturers might be different, but any that I've dealt with, they hook it up right in where the hot water tank is. And the reason for that is if you live in a cold climate, it's just less water line exposed that you have to heat tape. It's always a good idea in the fall to get up under the house and just make sure your heat tape is working. That can either be looking at the light, make sure it's on, or physically reaching onto the water line and making sure it's warm. The last thing you want is in the middle of the winter to have your water line freeze. Then you gotta get under there with a the hair dryer and try and thaw it out while it's freezing cold outside. I've done it, it is not fun. Normally the lot will have one or two sewer drops that the plumber can connect to. So you're going to have drops coming under the house at the bathroom, kitchen, and utility room and another bathroom if you've got it. So it's nice to have two drops if it's a big house because if you've got a bathroom on one end and then the other end is where the sewer drop is, sometimes it can be tough to get the slope to get from one side to the other and it's just a really long run. So it's, it works to have a drop at either end if it is a really big house sometimes more. The house I'm sitting in now, I think has three drops. So the bigger the house, the more drops you want. That just makes less of a maze of pipes underneath the home. Finally, you gotta build steps or a deck, or in our case, both, because you gotta have a way to get up into this house. You can't be just jumping up into these things. 
Um, so what we did on this one, front door, four by four landing with a set of steps out to where the cars are gonna be parked on the driveway. And on the back door, we did an eight by 10 deck, perfect place to get outside and barbecue and just hang out in the summer. So let's go over to Vernon and we'll do a walk around. Now that it's done, it's set up, we'll check out what everything looks like. All right, let's have a look at everything done. So you can see we've done a bit of landscaping. Uh, we haven't been able to put the turf in because we did get a snowfall here and the turf company packed it in for the year. But we've got the skirting done here. That's looking nice. We've got our eight by 10 deck off the back door. And then we've got our steps with the four by four landing off the front door. Then let's go see if the power is hooked up around the other side. Back of the house, we need to get a pressure washer in, but that'll come. So that's where the power hooks up here. This post, let's just take a quick look at that. So the power coming from the kiosk runs in there. Power going to the house runs out there up underneath and into the home. We're still waiting for the plumbing to be done in Vernon. So what I've done is come back over to Salmon Arm so we can go under a house here because I do want to show you what it's going to look like when the plumbing's finished. What's nice about the vinyl skirting is you can access under the house anywhere. So you just lift this piece up, slide a piece out and pull it up. So we'll crawl through and see what we can see. I should have opened two panels a little wider than this hole. So you can see we've got the sewer drops from one end of the house running into this sewer drop. We've got the master bathroom back there and that on that side is the laundry room and it's running into one sewer drop. And then let's check the heat tape. You can see it's plugged in right up there. Lights on, it's warm. So that is the water line going up right there and into the house. So now we're looking back towards the front of the house and on the left, that drop is the kitchen sink and the far one way down at the end is the second bathroom. So that runs into the front drop. And by having two drops on this home because it is 66 feet long, it just makes it so it's not a maze under here. It keeps it nice and clean. What we've got left is put the sidewalk in, which will be done today. And then it's down to plumbing and getting it listed. Once the plumbing's hooked up and I can give it a good cleaning, I'm gonna come through and do a full home tour, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.